Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today, courtesy of Select Fire Weaponry in Waukesha, Wisconsin, we have a really cool, a very rare rifle to take a look at. This is an HK-43. It is HK's paramilitary rifle in 5.56. Now, this looks just like an HK-33, and for good reason. This is the original civilian semi-automatic version of the HK-33, which at the time, Heckler & Koch was calling the paramilitary rifle. Uh, the basic timeline on this is that of course, HK has its G3 adopted by the German military, roller-delayed 7.62 NATO caliber. In 1968, they come out with the HK-33. This is the essentially that big battle rifle scaled down to 5.56. The US is potentially interested in something like this. HK wants to have a go at getting a US military contract. As an aside, there's actually a batch of essentially these rifles, although with a few different details, that are made under the name of Harrington and Richardson and actually tested by US Special Forces in Vietnam. That's the H&R T223, and someday I'll get my hands on one of those rifles and do a video on it for you. But they never managed to get an actual US military contract, but the HK-33 in 5.56 caliber becomes a fairly popular rifle for the export market, military export market, and it's successful enough that HK goes ahead and also makes a civilian semi-automatic only version of it. Now when they do that, which is 1974, the designation that they give it is the 43, and at this time there's also an HK-41. And for those of you who aren't familiar with HK's nomenclature system, it's a two-lettered or two-numbered designation. The first number tells you the type of weapon, and the second number tells you the caliber. So, for example, the HK91 is the semi-automatic 308 rifle. The 9 means it's a semi-automatic rifle, and the 1 means it's in 762 NATO. The HK94 was essentially the semi-auto version of the MP5. Again, 9 means it's a semi-automatic rifle. 4 means that it's caliber 9 by 19. Uh, you might think, well, what would that be for this? That would be HK-93, semi-automatic rifle in 5.56. However, these are 40 series rifles. That's because when HK first started making these semi-autos, they were making them in part, or ideally, for the German market, and they started with the 41. And 40 series meant paramilitary. What they intended by that was this was going to be a rifle that the uh, a reservist or even an active duty soldier could own him or herself to take out and shoot and practice. And under German law it had to be semi-automatic, but it could otherwise retain all the same features as the standard military rifle, or most of them. And so the idea was we're going to sell these to reservists and soldiers, and so it was the paramilitary rifle. It's not quite military, it's for the paramilitary market. So there were two rifles that came out with these designations, the 41, which was in 7.62 NATO, and was the more popular of the two, and the 43, which is this rifle in 5.56. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at it, because there are a couple odd characteristics that it has, especially compared to the later HK-93s that would follow it. Let's start with the markings, and then we'll take a look at some of the other physical characteristics. On the left side here we have the designation HK-43, the date of importation, which is uh, March of 1974, and as far as I can tell they're all March 74, and then we have the serial number. Now the E means export, and then all of the examples that I've seen referenced uh, start with 1001. So they're in the 1 million and 1000 serial number range, or rather they're in the 1 million range and they started at 1 million 1001. I don't know how many of these exactly were imported. Uh, the highest number I've seen reference to is approximately 1450, so maybe goes up to about 1500 total. Um, the records are well, not accessible to me at any rate. Now this was done, these were manufactured by HK before HK had a US presence. And so if we look at the markings on the right side we'll see made in Germany exclusively for Sako. This was the company that handled uh, importation and distribution of HK rifles at this point, uh, before 1975 when HK set up their own direct importation. So Sako handled HK-43s, HK-41s, and HK-300s, which was HK's 22 Winchester Rimfire Magnum rifle, interestingly. Anyway, uh, Arlington, Virginia is where they were based, a zip code and caliber with a K, that would change to C in the early 80s, caliber 223. Worth noting, these run just perfectly fine on 5.56 NATO, 
they were marked 223 because that was, well, that was the, the style of the time. You'll find a lot of these older uh, pre-ban military style rifles uh, were imported marked 223, not 556, but that doesn't mean there's any problem with ammunition interchangeability. Now some interesting features here. The barrel is actually the same barrel that the HK-33 uses, which is a little bit of a problem because that's a 15.35 inch barrel. It does not meet US minimum uh, length to be a non-NFA rifle. So what they had to do instead was put on this flash hider and then blind pin it in place, make it permanently attached. Apparently some of these are welded on, some of them are blind pinned. This one, you can see the remnants of the pin there. Later with the HK-93s they would switch to a standard 16 or 16 and a quarter inch barrel so that they could just retain a threaded muzzle and a standard muzzle device. The 43 has hand guards set up to use a bipod should you want one, although this didn't come with a bipod. Oh, and because this predates the uh, NATO standardization on 62 grain SS-109 ammunition, uh, all of the HK-43 barrels are 1 in 12 inch twist, which means 55 grain ammunition or lighter only. Our selector markings here are S and F, eventually that would later change to 0 and 1 instead of safe and fire. And of course there is no pin and there is no thumb paddle magazine release. For the mag release you just have the button here, and by the way these came with uh, steel, this is a steel 25 round magazine. You could get 20, 25, 30, and 40 round mags for the HK-33, and of course these mags are completely interchangeable with the 33. The lack of a standard push pin here is part of what HK had to do to make these compliant with import laws. So you could not just take a fully automatic fire control group and plop it right onto a nominally semi-auto rifle. So they welded on this what's called a shelf down here, and that took the place of the regular push pin. And by the way, these were all done in this black paint finish, uh, not grey, not parkerized, these early ones were black painted. I think it looks pretty good. Now for disassembly we can just punch the one pin here out, like so. Note that 762 by 51 millimeter HKs have two pins for the stock, the 9mm and 5.56 ones have just a single pin. With the stock off, the grip assembly just pivots down and off. And I can pull the bolt assembly out. The HK-43, like I said, is basically an HK, a military HK-33 minimally adapted to make it semi-automatic, and so it has a built-in buffer right here in the bolt carrier that we would not see typically, at least not in the later HK-93s. Uh, on the later production guns they would put a buffer in the stock instead, but here we have just a little bit of a rubber washer and that's it. There's nothing in the stock. Uh, in the AK world you would call that an unbuffered stock and a buffered bolt carrier. Of course the push pin mounting point has been removed here. There have been a couple changes made to the fire control group, so the auto sear and the trip lever are both uh, gone, and the outer casing here has this detent on it so that you can't push this uh, selector lever into what would be the full auto position, which would be down here. So they've, they've made those adjustments, so it is a semi-automatic only uh, rifle. Now it's true these came into the country before the 1986 Hughes Amendment, which means there are at least a few of them that were uh, legally converted into quote-unquote American-made machine guns in the United States after they were imported, but all of these were imported as semi-automatics. And of course you can see the shelf here. The shelf gets in the way of the bits that would allow the paddle magazine release to operate, so it's been omitted and you just have the push button magazine release instead. Of course the military HKs give you both options, paddle or button. In addition to leaving those parts out, normally you would have a surface right here in the bolt carrier that would uh, interact with the auto sear that has been milled out. So um, this is a semi-auto bolt carrier as well as a semi-auto fire control group. The thing that makes the HK-43 so rare is the fact that it was produced there was essentially only one batch of them ever made, because 
Uh, later in 1974, after these were produced and imported into the US, German law changed, and the requirements for what a reservist could own changed, and the impetus for having a 40 series of rifles available for sale disappeared. They couldn't be as, as simply purchased and owned under German law. And so HK essentially discontinued the whole 40 series line. Now they were still interested in selling semi-automatic rifles uh, for various export markets, especially the United States, but those required some kind of different characteristics to meet US import law as well as other countries' import laws. And Perhaps they thought the whole paramilitary designation was a little bit scarier sounding than what they were really going for, and so they were replaced with the 90 series of rifles. So the very first batch of HK-93 rifles, essentially identical, in all practical terms identical to this, the first of those were actually made in late 1974. By 1975 that was the standard new pattern, and ultimately by the time US import law prohibited importation of this sort of rifle in 1989, more than 18,000 of these rifles would have been imported. So of the 18,000 plus HK-93s you have to compare to, the numbers are hard to get, but definitely not more than 500 HK-43s ever made, and I'm not sure how many of those actually came into the US. So. It was really cool to get a chance to take a look at this one. A big thanks to Select Fire Weaponry out of Waukesha, Wisconsin for loaning this to me to film. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.